guys, welcome back to Geek with Dev. Today I'm excited because I'm going to be talking to Cullen Moss, who plays in the new series Outer Banks, which has recently taken the world by storm, no pun intended. If you've watched the show, you understand what I mean by that. But uh, yeah, so thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Our uh, buddy Pete actually looped us in and got us able to uh, talk. Did you do an interview with Peter or... I did, yeah, yeah, Petey Beats. Petey Beats, man, he's a cool guy. I did, um, uh, yeah, I'm glad he introduced us. But thanks for having me on, Devin, for sure. Yeah, of course. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start off, um, you're going to be asked these questions a lot because uh, you are a rising star now, uh, like most of the cast on the show. Some of your friends that you met who were just another Joe now have millions of followers. That's kind of crazy to see that happen, mm -hmm. eh? Uh, yeah, it is crazy. I mean, um, just to, to have this, to, to have this, uh, popularity rise in such a relatively short period of time. And just, I know I'm not as recognizable as, as the kids, the lead actors. So I'm going to make this easy for everybody. Here we go. Um, just so it, is that the actual prop from the show? No, no. This is like oh. some kids thing. I didn't get to keep oh. props. No. <laughs> Um, um it's it's been insane it's been uh I'm, and i'm so happy for geez, yeah. i think madeline and chase both hit a million not long ago um austin was already there also uh, yeah i was wondering how he got how he got his following but um i messaged all the cast when they were at like i think 11 12 000 followers and then it just became like in in a week it was just like yeah, that, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> how did you get the actual part? Were there any other auditions that you did? I'm pretty sure this was the only role I read for for Outer Banks. But you, that's a good question because, yeah, with a lot of shows, with a lot of series, <clears throat> you know, you'll read for numerous roles before you finally land something. And you don't always get in on the ground floor at the pilot uh, like this. But I was fortunate enough to uh, to have this role come through. My agent, um, I'm with the my southeastern agent is JTA um, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Work with um, Keisha, Michelle Trevelier, and uh, Mary Kay Farley, like two awesome women. And anyway, they all auditions come through them generally out of the southeast. And uh, the Finn Cannons are casting directors, uh, regional casting directors in the southeast that are just phenomenal. And actually, um, they're they're casting this show. Um, and they've, they've <clears throat> cast me in a lot of other shows and this one came along and they saw, uh, Lawman in the South, which I'm not unfamiliar with. So, uh, naturally that one, um, landed on my doorstep and I, I was able to, to read for it. And then through like this kind of comedy of errors, I wound up, um, being able to go <clears throat> before I was cast, being able to go to the first table read where they get cast members and um, it, it's Netflix execs, producers, writers, um, and whatever cast they can gather to read aloud the scripts around like in person live around a table. I wasn't going to be able to do this table read. I was going to be out of town working on another show. And um, somehow I was able to do it. And the Finn Cannon said, hey, can you come do this? And my wife, who's an actress also, they said, can your wife come and read as well for some additional roles. So, and Lisa Mae Fincannon, who also has a cameo in the show. She also is the, uh, the desk sergeant or whatever, the police dispatch woman who, who, who Chase uh, John B comes to at the police station. And she says, hold on just a minute, honey. And she goes, gets the deputies. That's Lisa Mae Fincannon, the casting director who, to whom um, so many actors owe their livelihood to. Anyway. Cool. Uh, she asked if I could do this, and she said it would be another opportunity to read the role of Shoop and uh, in front of Netflix and directors and writers. And so I was like, heck yeah, I'll do it. And so I got there and, and uh, got to do it. And during intermission, <clears throat> intermission, <laughs> uh, when we took a break between the first and the second uh, episodes, um, we we're in the green room and Chip and Rudy and Bailey, Madison Bailey and Madeline Klein and uh, Chase and JD were all in there and grabbing snacks and shooting the shit. And, and I went in and, um, <clears throat> and Chase was like, bro, because I'd read 
I got to read like the light, the weird lighthouse guy too. I got oh, I read right his on. part and Shoop and a few other little roles. He was like, bro, you're, you're killing it in there. He's like, I, he's like, I don't know if they've already cast you. He's like, but it's like, but I'm gonna put a good word in for you. And I, and we was like, definitely. They were all, they all, they were all pro, pro me for Shoop. So that was nice. Pro Shoop, you know, tell me, um, of course I, I, I heard, um, that uh, I, I don't know where I've seen it, but they, everybody became like a family on the first table read is what they told me. It was so natural. Uh, where was I going with this? Um, I, like you just you said, I took an hour to answer that question. No, you're fine. But what was the last thing you said? Question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Were there any challenges getting into your character? I mean, you are familiar with um, being a... I, is the word militant? Can I use that word? I think you can, you can use it. I don't know if it's right. Uh, dear, dear John, hidden figures, like all these these movies and little shows that you've been in. Uh, this is your big one as a, as a police officer. And were there any? Yeah, basically, were there any challenges getting into your role? Not really. Um, like like you said, it was kind of it was familiar ground. Um, I played a lot of a lot of cops. This this one in particular, you know, they. <clears throat> um, it was less of a challenge than, than I, I'd say because the writing was so good. Um, it was less of a challenge than say walking into, you know, a, a, a cop that has like one or two lines, you go in there and the, and the challenge is to, tr you know, to try to make the most out of <laughs> what you're given. And, and here, you know, I felt like I could take my time and uh and enjoy the role and um and play with it i mean and certainly the um <clears throat> the writing lent itself to that and our director uh you know um our, our directors um opened the door for that too and like and and allowed um for improvisation and they want you know they wanted everybody to bring themselves to to the role certainly they wanted a swagger and um you know so they wanted to uh, Shoop to be braggadocious and full of himself and you know and a yeah. little morally <clears throat> excuse me morally questionable <laughs> i did say grab a drink before this and you grab a drink i did grab a drink it's, it's so, so good oh right. it's water it's just water best tasting um, thing in the world mm. so uh so no it, there there weren't really that many challenges as far as finding the role they were it, you know it was part of it is just feeling at home on a set like, like I said, I knew a lot of the crew members uh, were from well, or were old friends from Wilmington. Yeah, that's awesome. There, so there was just there was already this real familial, uh, legitimately familial uh, sense on set to you know to put me at ease. And uh, amazing crew, amazing cast members, and and so in jo and um, Jonas, Pate, you know, just really allowing people to to breathe in their roles. It's nice. Yeah, I heard a, a lot of good things about Jonas. He's a good dude. Um, yeah, and, jo and Josh and Shannon, the other writers, just uh, incredible and, and you know, really let you be kind of a part of the process. Yeah, nice. so I, um, I had a lot of people uh, reaching out when I posted about the fan questions, saying that uh, you, you seem like a, a real dirty cop or at the beginning of the show. What is the exact line? Everybody's got to... Everybody's got to dip the beak. Beak? Yeah, dip exactly. Beak. We're left with, with more questions than answers as to your character's character. I mean, do you think that we will see him grow in another season? How would you like to see him be developed? And is, is he a good cop? You can answer one of those 10 questions, whichever you, whichever you feel. Um, I think... I think, I think he's... Um, I think he's, I think he's becoming a good cop. And I, you know, I think it's yeah. this, he's a small town, he's been a small town deputy and he's just kind of, I don't think he's had that much to sink his teeth into and probably, you know, part of what's begotten his, this moral ambiguity is just maybe boredom and like, you know, just that uh, somebody with, <clears throat> with power and not that much, <laughs> nowhere really to focus uh his to to focus on in the in the kind of sleepy Kildare County um 
sure, there's there's the drug dealer going wild over there. <laughs> Barry's off I doing his own thing. Nobody cares about Barry. Uh, yeah, no. Crack Nick's Shack awesome. Nick. What a like what a what a great role. Like Nick did wonderful uh, stuff with with the role of Barry. Yeah. Um, but I think I think Shoop's a good cop, and certainly by the end of it, you know, there's a nice character arc. You d- definitely see him kind of uh, de- dirty, a little bit dirty early on. But you know, as the stakes raise, he rises to the occasion, and I think, and he, and you, you know, you see him going from kind of dirty, a little bit morally ambiguous and full of himself to having a purpose, what you know, um, and and wanting wanting vengeance. Um, and then it, then you see a turn from that into, you know, really wanting truth and justice to come through like rather than just raw um vengeance and uh so it it was it was a cool arc to be able to be able to to play yeah i think that's i think he is he's a good cop i think he does he wants he wants the right the right things is he inept every now and then sure did he let somebody steal his squad car right in front of him sure that happened (laughs) that was such a fantastic scene by the way very well done Oh, that was great. It was so it was that was a fun one to fun one to shoot too. Um Yeah. Yeah, Rob Mars plays Deputy Thomas is was is a fun guy to work with too. He's also uh one of our um main stunt guys, uh fight oh, yeah? coordinator. Yeah. Um so Rob Rob works a lot, but uh He was Sheriff No Neck, right? Yes, yeah, Deputy No Neck or whatever. Yeah. So he's the one in the in the um in the chateau with me when John, you know, when we're looking at the evidence, and John yeah. B calls me out and, and then takes off in my car and the shoot mobile, damn it. The shoot mobile, yeah, that's awesome. I think that like the character development and the arcs of a lot of the characters in this show definitely are something that makes it great. Besides your your own character, is there anybody that you think the the, the arc of the character is good or maybe wasn't fulfilled? Chip uh, did such a great job with Ward and play and and play and showing that duality, like his what yeah. he's trying to portray to everybody and and then you know who who he is is like he that was that and and I'm, I'm sure he had a ball being able to do that this is any actor loves to be able to to portray the lie like to how good you know f- try to figure out how good of an of an actor your character is um so yeah. that I, I thought he he did great and just in the when you get to see the the stuff that you know that um is revealed about him that that was a lot of fun um and uh and i loved i loved watching um watching pope's kind of evolution too you know oh yeah that was a good one kind of throwing caution to the wind by the end uh, uh jonathan davis did a great job with that everybody you know everybody had their moment to to shine and as far as their arc you know you get to you know and, you, and you're watching rudy's character you're watching jj go just you know just from kind of a stoner surfer dude and you to you see kind of what's behind his anti-authoritarian bent and you know what he's up against at home you see all that stuff madeline killed it chase killed it i mean that whole in madison bailey her playing like kiara's kind of no nonsense stuff but then to to get to see her soften and and uh and crumble at things is um really nice everybody did such a great job but like with with this big cast there are a lot of like really good actors that you know you don't get to see, you know, you don't get to see like a full arc, but you get to see these wonderful little moments. Like uh, Caroline, um, I want to, I want to say her name right. Uh, who plays Rose? Apaglu. Apaglu. Well, Apaglu. Anyway, I'm not sure. She plays Rose Cameron. She, I mean, she did great. And uh, Julia, who plays Wheezy. I mean, yeah, she's great um, too. Iraj. Um, he and I've been together and a few things who plays pope's dad anyway he's he's a wonderful actor just a lot of and and uh shell ramos who plays deputy plum who, like with me she's fantastic but and you know you don't get to see that much of them but they're like behind even the, the smaller roles uh, gary weeks who played luke uh jj's dad yeah. gary weeks is a wonderful like he is awesome he, i hated him oh yeah yeah That's, like, and then, it's amazing. But then you have that moment like where he you know you almost soften where he's having this like pill, like he's on pills and alcohol or whatever. And he has like this moment of softening uh, for JJ. It's, yeah, it's a, 
it's almost almost a tender moment <laughs> but uh yeah just a lot of good actors and and even the most minute roles and stuff adina porters um who who plays um who plays peterkin she's amazing and yeah, I was gonna and, and that's one that we didn't you know we didn't quite get to see the full circle exactly uh, that's what i meant by uh ones that didn't completely arc because I felt like there's so much more to her that we need to see. And uh, I think that we hopefully will see it. I mean, I don't know if you can spill the beans. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, what, we, what we can say, what we can't say. Um, when she, when the alien pops out of Sheriff Peterkin um, and takes over Rafe's body, that was kind of the most shocking moment to me of the season. Um, then Rafe is kind of possessed by this alien uh, demon spirit. Uh, for the rest of the season, uh, so uh, it'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens. Drew killed it. Drew is, yeah, him Drew, too. And uh, he was—I don't know if you're familiar with Godfather Two, but Fredo. If you, if you didn't see a little Fredo, there, that was, I'm smart. Right. I'm smart. Yeah, right. Exactly. While we were talking about Peterkin, um, do you think that your character is the one that, or well, I think I know that it, he's the one, but. Do you think your character is able to stand up and take on the role of sheriff? If that oh, yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah, Shoop's are <laughs> like, he's, I mean, by the end of season one, spoiler, he rises to the occasion for sure. And I think oh, yeah. that he'll think he's able to, uh, to carry the torch. Uh, I, I have no, and for anybody, this is not, I'm not being, um, I'm not being, effusive or whatever i don't i have no idea what season two holds for anybody who's like oh, season two okay. spoilers i don't know yeah like, i we know do. i have no we don't even idea. have the green light yet right so um i know but it's, it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but yeah i have no idea what the details are and i you know i hope there's a long life for for shoot ahead the um showrunner is that uh is that shannon so yeah so shannon it's one of the creators. I'm not sure who who is the showrunner. Um, I do not know. Somebody is. Somebody's running the show. Somebody's running the show, and I seen that they said um, that they're hoping for four or five seasons of OBX. And you yourself said, um, correct me if I'm wrong. You were talking about how it was being a, like like a Goonies crossover with a bunch of other cool shows that like crossover with the outsiders or was that gary i don't know i don't remember um i think we probably all um yeah. all i mean it, it was obvious um i'm still trying to find the show runners. anyway i'm giving up on that show. um so yeah i mean it was their obvious nods to not I, to, well the, the outsiders just in that you have the haves the have nots the, the kooks and the pogues or like you know the the greasers and the socias if you're familiar yeah. with the outsiders um yeah. And uh, and, then, and you've got Dawson's Creek, One Tree Hill, um, the OC kind of kind of vibe, um, and then you've got this. Then you've got Barry. Yeah, come on. There's then there's treasure. So of course you exactly. got exactly. And you know the um, they're going into old lady what's her name's house and yeah. And so you told me earlier about One Tree Hill. That was one of your um, other recognizable films have you is there any similarity can you tell me the similarities between that show i might go i'm gonna go watch that well just it was and just in that it was um a teen drama i was in that one for nine seasons from the pilot till almost the very last episode we guess you played off and on i know no i was oh you didn't play yeah, up <laughs> no i was one of the, i was one of the the kids but it was weird i was like i was older than almost the rest of the young cast uh, by a good bit and um but it was one of those things where i was like 27 when we started shooting and the role that i got was junk moretti who is like described as a 17 year old baller uh, really and i was and uh so i was i was like one of the kids who played street ball um at the river court with the with the with the og crew and um so I, they brought me popped me and another actor another uh guy vaughn wilson in and out of the show we hung out with um Chad Michael Murray's character with Lucas and and uh, with Lee Norris who played Mouth McFadden and um, Colin Fickus who played Jimmy like so we 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 were in this kind of old school crew 
that, and they'd pop uh, Vaughn and I and Skills, um, Antoine Tanner who played Skills, um, and they pop us in and out every now and then. So no, I didn't play a cop. I played Junk Moretti, shitty basketball uh-huh. player, um, possible high school student. They never uh, they never established me in the high school. Similarities are just I think pro- probably the um, the the fan base that they're gonna that it's gonna draw. Um, it, it, the demographic relatable. is going to be similar, and it's relatable. The the, the um, you know the kids are, they're all well written, and and to some extent um, they're all you know precocious in their own right. You know, they're when you think when you have your own high school re- recollections, you know, it's these some of these hit true, but you know they're also like they're out there doing stuff that that is worthy of television and going through, yeah. you know, going through higher stakes stuff than a lot of people uh, may go through more fantastical stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's similar in the demographic. It's going to draw and just that, that uh, you know, teen, it's teen drama. Teen drama, right on. So I'm going to move, move on a little bit here. Um, my friend uh, Reese, who absolutely loves the show, has a good question that uh, I didn't think of. So thank you, Reese. Um, if there is a season two, which oh my gosh, I know we're talking about this a lot, uh, would it be filmed in Charleston or the Bahamas? And if it is filmed in the Bahamas, would you like that? I would love that. Um, only if Shoop were able to go and be a part of it. <laughs> no, I, I it will be. I think it will shoot in Charleston um, if Still- it comes around. Just logistically, I think it's going to be easier. And at the by the end of season one, you know, it's it it would just it, to to move a whole crew to the Bahamas is going to be a little more difficult than having them come back to Charleston. Um, yeah. And and also by the end of season one, you know, the you've got the kooks still on the main. You know, um, all the you know you've got a uh, key and he and Pope and JJ are all still, um, still in the Outer Banks. And yeah. so I think there may, I'm sure, I'm, I think some of it will take place in, in the Bahamas um, just out of necessity. Cause that's, that's where, you know, that's where John B and Sarah are heading. And that's where, for what we, you know, spoiler, obviously uh, that's where the gold yeah. is. Yeah. Um, but uh Deputy Shoop, he knows a lot about what's going on, though. So if some of it takes place in the Bahamas, I I, I think Shoopy Shoop, what's it, Shoop Dog? Shoop Dog's going to go. Dog. Yeah, I think I think I'll Shoop Dog need to chase it down. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, it, it would be it would be out of Shoop's jurisdiction. But if there could be a play, yeah. like if he can make a play to like take the badge off and just do like you know go and try to. On his own, a little on his side own. story. Do, do a little renegade. That'd be cool. Do a little renegade thing. Maybe he can pat, you know, make uh, make Plum or Thomas interim sheriff while he goes and does a little a little personal work. I don't know. Do you think that there is possibly more of a story between uh, the, your character and Ward on the show? Possibly your character from being a bad cop could break and want in on the gold that he has, or claims to have that's a good that's a good question um and and i i would like to like i i was saying previously that i think i think yeah. everybody likes to think altruistically about their own characters and i would like to think that shoop would be immune to that sort of pressure and that sort of uh, that he wouldn't you know fall fall prey to um being enticed by the the money or the power even though we know it's in his past, but I'd like to think he's made a turn for the better and that he's going to make um, good and just decisions. But look, I, I've got no control over um, what the writers do. So I'll, you know, I'll go, I'll go any, I'll go with whatever they write for me. Just about. That's it. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. But I'd like uh, him to be a good guy. Yeah. That's what you always hope, right? I think that your character is so strong and, and portrayed so well that I, I it would be a shame to kind of see him go down that route but even if he did you'd still do a badass job like ah thanks thanks it is, and it is fun you know it, it is fun playing 
a bad guy. It is because if it's not just one dimensional, if you're able to show, if you're playing it by a bad guy, you can't, your bad guy can't be bad just for bad sake generally, you know I mean? So to, uh, to be able to, to do that in a well-rounded way. Sure. It's, it's always fun. Cool. All right. I'm going to move on to some fan questions that I got over different uh, sources of social media. There's four here. Let's start with Frank and Marth from Instagram said, who was the most fun on set? Um, yourself, right? Me. Shoot, definitely. Shoot um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a ball to be around. Um, everybody enjoys me. Got a great sense of humor. I do great fake fart sounds. Uh, it's just that's a skill you need. That is. I give you a little. Uh, that was a that was a bad one. I'm sorry. I, I've been out of practice. Um, but uh, who's the most fun to be around? It, that's that's so hard to say, man. I I really. Um, one person who's who's a lot of fun to be around is our. Uh, <laughs> not everybody would have this answer is our first ad michael jefferson our first assistant director uh michael jefferson great dude uh and he just like keeps the ball rolling and keeps yeah, everybody always motivated person. yeah um and I've, I've worked with him on a number of shows over years and years and years and so it's cool to have him on uh on this set um but i just the every, every one of the the lead actors i mean uh madison and Madison, Madeline, Chase, Rudy, uh, Jonathan, JD, I mean, all those guys had such, were so exuberant um, and, you know, re enjoying their time on it so much like that it was contagious. I and mean, you really felt when, you know, when, when they're on set, it was, there was an electricity. It was like, all right, cool. You know, we're, we're doing something fresh. And just everybody, everybody was, was fun. Um, yeah, I also, for sure. Our um, sound mixer, Mike Rail, one of my favorite people in the world too. Mike Rail is uh, good people. Our our cinematographer, Bo Webb, is um, another old dear friend from from Wilmington. So I mean, just got a lot of a lot, a lot of cool, cool people, cool factors. So I'm yeah. there. I dodged the I dodged answering the question concisely. Right on. Um, okay, so OBX updates one of the, the fan accounts on instagram asked what was filming like in the location you were in which is also close to home for you shooting shooting in this area is great i live in charleston i've been here um about three uh, going on three years now uh it's beautiful the low country area all that like hunting island um where we shot the lighthouse stuff uh beautiful um and i'm and i, I get to come home at the end of the day so yeah right on Cool. All right. And uh, this one is from many people I put on my sheet because a lot of people ask, did you have a favorite scene to film? One of the most fun ones was like when we um, uh, when we're getting ready to get, kind of get this search party going out on the marsh or we're trying to clear clear uh, all the civilians off the marshes. And it's just this ridiculous thing where I've got a I'm on the bow of a boat. Um, with with a bullhorn kind of rallying the rallying the citizens and stuff and it was this they had a great um they had a great shot coming or like a word word gone from my head um mm -hmm. yep drone like shot a, dr a drone, drone shot. shot that yeah that coming in and it was just a really uh it was a great shot and i got to like improv a little bit at the top of that and and it went into uh yeah, that that was a fun one just because that was just a little bit that was a good portrait of Shoop and just him feeling self-important and um yeah. and kind of but you know talking to the small town people a lot of whom he probably knew you know from fishing he probably fishes with some of these people when he's off duty and stuff so anyway, it was that was a nice little portrait piece I think and just kind of clarifying who he is um and it was a badass shot um but then it was, it was, a, it was, I, I loved the scene break, um, breaking the news to the kids in the tent. Um, once the SBI is in and everything and the Coast Guard's been out looking for our young couple um, and coming back and telling the kids that we can't find the two people that are, um, that we haven't been able to find John B and Sarah. 
um, and breaking that news and just and it was it was just good to be able to show that that was hard on Shoop that he that he does care about them and he's not you know um, I liked being able to show that side of him and, yeah Shoop has feelings yeah yeah like he he does feel bad about it cool um, right on he does want to find find them okay but uh i want to give the floor to you which is the point of an interview and ask do you have anything coming up anything exciting i mean with the world we're in right now probably not but is there anything you want to promote like now's your time shine oh god um well uh what to promote um well keep watching outer banks for keep sure watching um keep watching that um, and there'll be, uh, there's an, an indie movie out, uh, that, that'll be coming out. I'm not sure available where just yet, um, called the immortal jellyfish where I play another cop. Do you? Yeah. Um, but, you play cop in this interview. Like you're wearing the badge, you wore the badge the whole time. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm retiring just for the rest he's of the He's retiring. Brilliant you seen You've seen it here, guys. He's retired. Took the badge off. Um, Immortal Jellyfish is coming out. That'll be out soon. Uh, Whitmer Thomas is uh, one of the leads. Robert Longstreet's in it. It's uh, it's good. Dusty Bias wrote and directed it. Um, we shot that like down in Gulf Shores. Is Shore that down. premiering on Netflix? I don't know. I don't know what uh, what the distribution, what how they're how it's going to be out there. But that's coming out soon. And also, there's a great um, limited series. Um, based uh, based on the Colson Whitehead novel um, Underground Railroad. Um, that Barry Jenkins adapted for the screen. Barry Jenkins did um, Moonlight and if and um, if Beale Street could talk, um, that was the name. But anyway, Barry Jenkins, Academy Award winning writer director, um, and just extraordinary human being, uh, just cool, cool guy. He's he's um, writing, directing Underground Railroad uh, for. Um, it's going to be an Amazon Prime show. Oh, um, nice! But uh, I th I think that's still underway. But I ha I'm in a and I'm I'm in a couple episodes of that. It's got Joel right Edwards. On. I knew there's a Showtime series called Your Honor uh, that'll be coming out soon. Brian Cranston, um, all right, the lead in that, um, and he's he's one of the executive producers. Uh, that's a uh, I've got a little recurring role in that. Um, yeah uh awesome that's it you know uh things to keep your i don't know that's it that's it that's it that's, that's all it. i want to promote right um, on cool yeah man. thank you for coming on the show it really means a lot and um I'm, I'm super stoked that i got to talk to you um you did a great job man honestly really well thanks so much i really Devin, i appreciate it and you're you're handling all this very well so Thank yeah, you. Thank you. It's the dream. Chase the dream. Thank you.